Okay, everybody, if you're not watching Severance, then you should get Severed. New season came out, and they have this, like, new intro that involves these kind of balloon marks with, like, ties and hair going towards the ceiling. And it seems like there is a balloon motif in this season, like, it keeps showing up. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the show. I'm gonna recreate this balloon physics from the intro, because I think it is interesting. This video is brought to you by Brilliant. We're gonna talk about that later. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna need a balloon, and we're gonna do that using cloth dynamics. And then I guess we're gonna put a tie on it based off of that, and then we're gonna do a hair simulation. So either way, let's start off with an icosphere because it's an evenly distributed mesh instead of the actual normal sphere. Let's bring up the subdivisions, and then in edit mode, I just kind of want to stretch some of this down. So select a section, proportional editing, and make it look kind of like a balloon. So now if I take this and run it through a cloth system, it is going to fall. And that makes sense because the only four acting on it is gravity. So if we want it to float upwards, kind of the obvious thing to do is you might think, okay, we're going to take our gravity in the scene and reverse it. So instead of negative 9.8, it goes 9.8 on the Z. And that does work. But remember, we're going to have a tie attached to it that should be subject to normal gravity. And to get this floating behavior, what we can do is inside the pressure, you want to enable this. So if I do a pressure of like two, you're going to see it kind of inflates a little. It's kind of hard to tell. Let's bump it up to 10. Now you can really see that it's inflating. And then the secret is you want to take this fluid density and make it a negative number. So if I make it negative one, let's see what happens. It, it rises and almost like crinkles in on itself. Let's make that half as strong. Okay, that's still too much. Okay, there we go. So we have a balloon rising while gravity is still acting the way it is. Now I want this balloon to basically interact with a ceiling where it then bounces off of it, but also kind of deforms a little. To do that, all I need to do is add in a ceiling object. So something like this, this should not be a cloth, but a cloth collider. You're going to see that when we do the simulation, it is going to go right through it. Part of that is because the normals are inverted, but a second part of that is you can just disable this single-sided, and that's going to make it behave really nicely. So if we look here, it bounces and even does this like nice compression that I like. If you want it to be less intense, kind of like the uh, crinkling here, you just add a bit of pressure. So let's do a pressure of six. Maybe let's add a tiny bit of air viscosity, so it's kind of fighting against the thickness of the air in some sense, and I think I like the look of that. Okay, so now that I like the motion of this, I want it to behave a bit more randomly, because right now it's going straight up and then colliding and doing nothing beyond that. So I want to add a bit of wind, just a tiny bit of turbulence, and you can do that using a force field. This turbulence should be a lot higher than one. Let's test it. That does nothing. Let's try 100, and that should start behaving a little differently, like it's swaying side to side. Let's go up to 250 and also add in a bit of noise. And now you can see this balloon isn't going like perfectly straight up. It's doing some rotation and stuff like that, which means if I was to duplicate these balloons, yeah, now these are really behaving independently, and that is nice. So once you like the motion of this, we need to make sure this is baked in because because the tie physics and the hair physics are going to be dependent on the original balloon's motion. This can be done by just baking or caching the simulation. Frames 1 to 250 is fine with me, and hit bake, and now we should have a very nice balloon simulation that you can play back and forth. If I want to hang a tie off of the tip here, I need to know the motion of this section, which is kind of hard because the vertices themselves are moving, so let me show you a trick. I'm going to add an empty, which you can think of as a placeholder for the motion of the tip, and in some sense we should pair it to this object, but you're going to see it doesn't actually move with it because the motion is through this uh, cloth modifier. So instead, what you can do is go into the balloon object, go to edit mode, and then you can just select three vertices, like let's say these three, that are representative of the bottom. Control click the empty, and then we're going to run a make vertex parent. And what this does is it's not a normal parenting relationship, but if we go into the empty, you can see it's looking at three different vertices where it kind of averages out their like orientation and motion such that now we have an empty that tracks onto the bottom here. This is perfect because we can use it for our tie simulation. Speaking of which, let's just make a simple tie. It can be over here, maybe a bit thinner. And I want to model it so that it's thicker in some areas and thinner in other areas. So let's just do some proportional editing, maybe with smooth. So it's kind of thicker down here, gets really thin at the tip, and maybe a little thinner here. The important thing is I want to make sure that the two top vertices are aligned with the bottom of this balloon. Now, when I play this, right, it's not hooked to it in any sense. So the word hook is the actual hint of what you're supposed to do. So you take these two vertices, you hit uh, control again with the empty, and this time instead of making a vertex parent, we want to parent 
to the empty. So control H for hook, and you're going to hook it to the selected object. These two vertices now move with the empty, and they stretch with it. This is perfect, because now if I take these two vertices and make them a vertex group, so that is control G, and I can call this the pin group, meaning that these two vertices should kind of hold steady and not be subject to the simulation. Everything else is based off of it. Well, when I do that, you make a cloth simulation for your tie, which by default is just going to fall. Go to the shape, and we make sure to pin our pin group. So in other words, these vertices vertices are going to follow the empty, which in itself follows the balloon, and then the rest of the simulation is subject to it. And that's how you get something like that. Now you're going to see that there's a lot of turbulence in the tie, and that's because our turbulence kind of effector, force field, is affecting every cloth in the scene. To make it not affect the tie, or at least not as much, we can go to the field weights, which lets us control how much gravity does it have, how much drag, etc. And I'm going to turn down the turbulence a lot. Okay, so it goes up, and then it does this, but then it kind of intersects the balloon just for a moment there. Because I want it to collide with the balloon so I can't like go through itself, I'm going to make sure that this balloon in itself is also a collision object. It goes up and then the tie, perfect. You can see the tie doesn't intersect the balloon at all. Now there is an argument to be made that it shouldn't intersect itself either. And if you want to institute that within the collisions, make sure to enable self collisions. I'm just going to add some quality steps. And once we like our settings, you can just bake in that tie simulation. So our balloon rises, the tie is moving with it, and then it collides and acts uh, in a way that is pretty believable. Now one thing I'm seeing at the tip here is it kind of crinkles into itself. Now it's not so severe that it kind of like fully self-intersects, but it is something that would be nice if it was smoothed out. So without re-simulating, all we have to do is add something like a smoothing or even a subdivision surface. Let's shade smooth. Now that has turned into a feature. And with that, we have a balloon, we have the tie, and then the last thing is this hair dynamics, which again is dependent on the motion of this balloon. If I was to uh, take this balloon and add in a particle system, which will emit particles, but make sure that's using hair, then it will emit hair, but it's kind of going crazy. So there's a few things we need to do. The first thing is we need to make sure our source is updating with this cloth simulation and all of that. So to do that, you enable use a modifier stack. And additionally, I only want it to spawn on the top of this balloon. So control G to add a empty vertex group. And then for that, we can weight paint uh, something super simple. So I'm just painting the top of this balloon, which you can think of as a density map exactly representing uh, where there should and should not be hair. And then we can drive this hair simulation with that using what is it the vertex group and that should be our density. So now it's only spawning at the top. The hairs should just be like part of a mirror, even though this like scene isn't to scale or whatever. And the hairs are looking super weird, which we can fix using the uh, particle edit comb brush. So I'm just going to add like 3000 hairs or something like that. And then with particle edit, by default, you're going to see you're not going to be able to do anything. And that was driving me nuts. So it turns out that with the particle edit brushes, it works in a bunch of different contexts. So it works with cloth, soft body. And in our case, you have to switch it to particles. The moment you do that, you can see we can start kind of molding our hair, give it kind of like different hairdos. So if you have Mark's hairdo, it's probably like there's probably like a part right here. So let's see if we can kind of mimic that. We can also use some of these other brushes like the cutting brush which will let me kind of make a gap here and then comb each one to the side. This is more like a balding man, to be honest. Maybe add a tiny bit of puff. What puff does is it moves it towards the surface normal. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. If you're looking to learn especially technical skills, things like math, programming, now large language models and AI, Brilliant is the place to go. It's an online resource to not only like watch explainer videos, but to actually interact. By that, I mean you're solving problems, you're moving on, you're solving problems, and then you progress rest assured at the end, you've actually learned something. This is something you can take on the go, so not only on the uh, desktop, of course, but you can also bring it on your mobile phone. And one particular module I want to recommend is just programming module in general, which has a focus on not only programming principles, but by the end, you're actually going to know some Python. Learn how to think programmatically. And by using the link below in the description, there should also be a QR code. You can not only get the first 30 days free so you can get started, but if you want to get the annual membership, that will also tack on a 20% discount. Okay. Thank you, Brilliant. If I was to uh, take this balloon and add in a particle system, which will emit particles, but make sure that's using hair, then it will emit hair, but it's kind of going crazy. So there's a few things we need to do. The first thing is we need to make sure our source is updating with this cloth simulation and all of that. So to do that, you enable use a modifier stack. And additionally, I only want it to spawn on the top of this balloon. So control G to add a empty vertex group. And then for that, we can weight paint uh, something super simple. So I'm just painting the top of this balloon, which you can think 
think of as a density map exactly representing uh, where there should and should not be hair. And then we can drive this hair simulation with that using, what is it, the vertex group, and that should be our density. So now it's only spawning at the top. The hairs should just be like part of a mirror, even though this like scene isn't to scale or whatever. And the hairs are looking super weird, which we can fix using the uh, particle edit comb brush. So I'm just going to add like 3,000 hairs or something like that. And then with particle edit, by default, you're going to see you're not going to be able to do anything. And that was driving me nutso. It turns out that with the particle edit brushes, it works in a bunch of different contexts. So it works with cloth, soft body, and in our case, you have to switch it to particles. The moment you do that, you can see we can start kind of molding our hair, give it kind of like different hairdos. So if you have Mark's hairdo, it's probably like, there's probably like a part right here. So let's see if we can kind of mimic that. We can also use some of these other brushes, like the cutting brush, which will let me kind of make a gap here and then comb each one to the side. This is more like a balding man, to be honest. Maybe add a tiny bit of puff. What puff does is it moves it towards the surface normal, which means it gets away from the tangent. It kind of puffs away from the surface. And then finally, we can modify the length so that some hairs are longer than others. So maybe some of these in the front can be longer and then combed uh, sideways. Make sure to enable hair dynamics, which will make our hair kind of show up the way it was supposed to. And I think default settings should work pretty well. I mean, it's definitely trying to do hair dynamics here. I think uh, some things that'll make this more stable is for the collisions, add some quality steps so that it collides better with our surface. Maybe in the structure, we can add rigidity. So maybe we can add some dampening so it's not as like soft and can bend wh whichever way it wants to. Maybe even add a bit of stiffness. That's looking pretty good, minus the hair whipping around everywhere. And it just occurred to me, this is the same issue that we had with the tie. What I mean by that is we still have this turbulence, which also affects hair. So if I was to go into the field weights, take the turbulence, bring it to zero that should be the fix that we needed okay good so now it's nice and stable cash frames one to 250 and bake that bad boy this one's going to take a bit longer because we have the uh, 3,000 hairs each with five segments that we are then going to interpolate and add some clumping and things to the balloon rises up to the surface and boom well <laughs> it tried its best and okay so it explodes how do we handle this and make it not explode well maybe the first thing is maybe this time we can actually orient the normal so that it's pointing downwards flip this normal Maybe we can also give it a bit of thickness, which I guess means we need to flip it again. I'm also going to control A to apply rotation and scale. So I'm just using every trick in the book to make sure that it's more stable. And then inside the collision settings, I think for the particle, it also affects hair. I'm just going to add a bit of dampening, a bit of friction, and hopefully that will do it. Okay, did this solve the issue? Please tell me it did. So it collides and beautiful. I'm not sure which of the things did it. I would imagine it's the actual thickness. By the way, the reason that the hair just, boop, here it is, disappears on frame 180 is because I guess it explodes again. So you could add quality steps to fix that. I'm just going to do the trick of saying that was intentional. The animation was supposed to end uh, there. So there you go. We have three layers of physics. We have the buoyancy cloth simulation of the balloon. We then have the tie bouncing that is subject to um, gravity in a visible way. And then we also have hair dynamics at the top here. So let's just kind of give this a final look that we can render. I mean, with my scene, it was, you know, a full scene, but let's get this closer to the finish line. So once you have all of these hairs simulated, you can think of them as a bunch of tiny curves that hold the simulation data, but we can totally interpolate and add more hairs based on that information without re-simulating. What I mean by this is if you go to the, what's it called? It is called children, like the uh, children of Kier. Uh, you take that, you set it to interpolated, and all of a sudden you have more hair. So when I set this to one and two and three, it's just going to interpolate more hair strands. So I'm just going to go 20 by 20 so that viewport and render looks the same. And the beautiful thing about using children is it not only densifies everything, and it totally does, but it gives us control of how we want the children and in other words the entire hair simulation how we want it to look like so what i mean is we can control the overall length we can add some parting so that the hair is kind of like parted and maybe even clumped together do you want to add roughness i feel like that's the secret so i'm going to add some uniform roughness which you can see kind of randomizes it a bit you want to increase the size so it's not this like low frequency thing probably good to add a bit of randomness so it's kind of like a furrier hair in some sense and then what else do i want i think these settings are fine but all of that is going to map on in a way that should be fairly stable. Maybe like a tiny bit of a low amount of curl. Yeah, that looks really nice. Okay, let's just apply some materials. The first thing I'm concerned with is how do we shade the hair and the balloon separately, even though they are technically the same object, right? It's the same thing. Well, to do that, you want to go into your render settings for the hair, and you're going to see it's going to assign it a material. In this case, it's the default material. So in the shading workspace, I can go into this material, which you can see now is assigned here. So you can see it's all like 
uniform at the moment, which I said is the issue, right? The hair and the balloon are of the same color, uh, but I want to separate these. The way to do that is, again, these hairs are basically curve information, which means we can extract that info using a curve info node. This tells you what is hair and isn't hair. It tells you where it intercepts with the surface. You have the length of it, you have the thickness of the hair, normals and tangents, and randomness. If I use this is strand to separate two BSDFs, so we can have a principled hair BSDF and then a, you know, normal principled BSDF. I mix the two of these together and use this as the factor. You can see we've now separated these nicely. I'm going to see if I can get some really basic lighting using like a sky texture or something. I'm going to hide that. And now we can play around with the material for our hair. So uh, the principled hair BSDF, there's a lot of settings, but the way I would recommend using it is I would change this to melanin concentration. What melanin is, is it's a chemical compound. I don't know what it is, but it's something in your body or in your genetics or something that determines the color of your skin, also the color of your hair. It's kind of like this thing that really determines what you look like. So if you have a low amount of melanin, you're going to see you have white hair. If you have a bit, it's going to be kind of blondish. And as you go this way, it's going to be brown and then eventually black. Uh, so let's say our hair is, I don't know, maybe some kind of brownish, some kind of like dirty blonde kind of thing. I don't know if that's like a bad phrase. I know I call myself dirty blonde. We'll find out. To get a basic balloon material is it should be pretty see-through. So that's what this uh, transmission does. I'm also going to lower the roughness because it is quite reflective. Let's make this balloon a nice kind of like lumen blue. And to get it to look less weird, I believe the IOR is the culprit. So you just want this to be kind of like a low value so that it's almost see-through like air is and maybe a little less transmission. And that kind of looks like a balloon to me. One thing I like to do, I don't know if it's accurate, is I like to go to sheen and add a bunch of it. So this is without and then this is with the sheen. It just adds some like lighting to the edges that I feel like is usually there. So we can go for kind of like a bluish tint and yeah, that, that's pretty good. And then for the tie, I'm also going to make a simple material that is going to exploit, a very targeted word, it's going to exploit its UV coordinates that stay the same no matter where the thing flings to. This is because these UVs are, you know, stationary. They don't move in any sense. Run them through a wave texture. This is a good way to get stripes. I'm just going to turn them so that they're horizontal. Let's add more of them. Maybe what we can do is we can actually rotate this a little. So I'm going to take my UV coordinates and rotate them about the Z axis. This will let us make the uh, stripes diagonal. So something like that. Beautiful. Run it through a color ramp so we can decide colors. So maybe like a black and let's again go for the blue. I don't know what color scheme I liked. I think originally I used blue and white or something. Maybe we can also add a bit of black in between here just to add a bit of a crisp edge. I mean, this looks very tie-like to me. Hook that up into the principled BSDF, view it, and now we have a tie. You can see it goes up, it goes up, and boom, nice materials and everything. So I'm liking the way that this is looking. It's not the exact same thing, obviously, as the Severance intro sequence. I just thought this would be an interesting way to, one, reference the show that I've been obsessed with and watching theory videos about, etc., uh, but also how to do layered anime or physics simulation and stuff like that. So if you want to get the original scene, that thing I showed in the beginning where there's a bunch of balloons and like a kind of like a basic office that I whipped up pretty quickly, you can get that over at www.cgmatter.com. That's what I'm using as my like Patreon-esque service. You can get early tutorials, so you could have seen this earlier. You can get project files, you can get ramblings, I make these HTML documents and all of that. Um, and all of that is for $5. So please do check it out. That's how I'm trying to run everything through that cgmatter.com website. It would be an honor to have you and you get like since 2019, six years, I think, of project files for $5. So there you go. Watch Severance. Please do it.